Hello! So if you're here, you're here for a tutorial, so let's just go ahead and get started. Um, this is the dispersion tutorial, um, which is what you will use to complete your comprehension quiz. Um, so comparing this tutorial from last year, we do have um, some new tools, and one in particular that we will use instead. So the first thing to do is mask out our guy from the background here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my object selection tool, which is in the same stack as your quick selection and your magic wand tool. And you're just going to click and drag and make a marquee around your guy. Uh, now, as you can see, as I'm making my marquee, I accidentally came in a little too close and I'm missing his arm over here. So you don't necessarily have to start over. Just remember before you release your mouse, you can press and hold space bar and that will let you move your marquee around, recenter it if you need to, let go of spacebar and continue making your marquee and drop it wherever you find it complete. Um, now everyone is probably gonna get the same results based on this tool. And for the most part, it looks really good, but if you look really, really close, there are some areas that are not perfect. So I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, remember space bar and then command and click and drag to the right to zoom in. You can see on his forehead some of the um, hat and his forehead where it's really bright and the sun is hitting it did not get selected. So I'm going to enter into my quick mask mode and that icon is at the bottom of your tools panel underneath your color picker. It looks like a square with a circle in it very similar to your um, vector mask icon in your layers panel. So you can either click on it or you could use the key command. So if I hover over this, it will say um, edit in quick mask mode and Q in parentheses. So if I just hit Q, it will enter me into that quick mask mode where you will only be using a regular brush in black or white. So your colors should automatically just change to black and white when you're in this mode. And I just want a regular hard round brush. Um, not super big, so mine is really big. I'm going to hit my left bracket button until it is small enough to use. Now, you may want to see more of a difference between the hat and the background. Quick mask mode by default is in red. If you want it in a different color, you can double click on your quick mask mode, and maybe we want to change it to a color that's more contrasting with that red, so blue, and enter back into that mode, and it might make it a little bit easier to see um, cause at first I actually thought this spot right here was just an area that did not get masked, but it looks like for some reason there is some red in his hair. I don't know. That's not my problem. So anyways, um, with your black and white, you're going to use white to erase the areas that should be, um, just him. And if there's any areas that need to be removed or maybe you go too far, um, like that, you can switch those colors by either clicking on that little bent arrow or you can just press the letter X on your keyboard and that will switch the colors for you. Um, so I'm just going to go around and clean up this selection the best that I can, just paying attention to all the little details that should be included. So a little bit of his nose got chopped off there. Looks like some of his mustache and his bottom lip and maybe some of his beard hair as well. Um, and if we really wanna be nitpicky, there are some areas that could be um, removed as well. So maybe underneath his arm, we can bring this a little bit tighter into the selection. There's this little tiny hole right here. So I can take care of all these little things in this mode that I see and get this as clean as I can. The cleaner your selection is, usually the better your um, results of your design turns out when you pay attention to these little details. So I don't wanna get too much there. Okay, once I think this is good, oh, fix this hat, and I'm happy with the results, I can exit that quick mask mode. So again, either click on the icon or just press the letter Q and we have a nice selection here. You may notice there's some areas that, oh, maybe it wasn't totally perfect. So you can enter back in and fix it again if you really want to. 
I know a lot of you are very um, attentive to detail here, which is fine. Okay, so it is ready to go on to the next step. So I'm going to make a copy of what I have selected. And the easiest way to do that is to press Command and the letter J on your keyboard. Um, when you're looking at the image itself, it doesn't look like anything happened. But if you look at your layers, we now notice there is a layer one. And if we hide the background layer, it's just him. Okay, so after you have cropped your image, um, or sorry, not cropped it, but masked out your image, if you want to transform this in any way, now is the time to do it. So for this particular tutorial, I do want everybody to flip him horizontally. Uh, the long way to get there is to go up to edit, transform, and flip horizontal. Another way that you can do it is to press con command T for transform to get into the transform uh, menu here. Not really a menu that pops up, but you're in the action. And then you can either right click or if you don't have right click, you'll probably have to control click and you can say flip horizontal. You do have to be in that transform mode though, because once I get out of that, so I'm gonna do that again, I'm going to command T and then I get this menu here. But if you don't do command T first, you won't get that menu. So once you make that flip, you can either hit the check up here or hit return on your keyboard or you can just double click inside the image until that check in the little no-no circle go away and that is a applied transformation. So you'll notice when I'm no longer in that transform form mode, if I right click, I only have these options. I'm not getting the option to flip horizontally. Okay, so he is flipped onto the side. The next step in this tutorial, um, which actually isn't included on the video that's attached um, just for us, we're going to change the uh, file size of this document. So we're going to choose our crop tool or you could press the letter C on your keyboard. And sometimes by default, it might just be ratio here or original ratio or something like that. We're gonna choose W times H times resolution, so width times height times resolution. And we want it to be eight by 10.5, which is our portfolio print size. Um, put your uh, resolution at 300. Right now it just wants to crop the image down. Um, you may want to, in your mind, just move this over so that the guy is in the picture here, but I'm actually going to make this big enough so that it fills the whole thing. So if I were to zoom out now, it's actually making my document bigger. So now I'm gonna move him so that he's down to the bottom here because I don't really want that harsh cutoff at his waist. And I'm gonna leave a bunch of space behind him. And I'll apply that transformation. So again, either hit the check or hit return until this sets in place and you see that checkerboard background again and I'm going to grab my move tool so that I'm no longer on crop. I don't wanna accidentally crop it again. Um, you could always hit the letter V. I like to make that a habit. After I use any tool, I immediately just hit V on my keyboard to choose back to the move tool. Okay, so now we're going to make a second copy of our guy here. So make sure that layer is selected and hit Command J again, and it's made a copy. We're going to select the layer beneath that copy. So we have two different layers here. We want the one underneath, so layer one, not layer one copy. And I'm gonna go up to Filter, and I'm gonna choose Liquify. And this is gonna open up a new dialog window here. We are going to be using this very top tool, forward warp tool. Um, by default, it should already be chosen. There are other tools in here, but we're not going to use them for this particular tutorial. Um, we should see some brush tool options on our right. Uh, the size is just dependent on the size of your brush, just like any other brush. You can choose the left or right bracket keys on your keyboard to make them bigger or smaller. Um, we have the density and the pressure. We're going to leave those as they stand by default, so density at 50 and pressure at 100. 
I'm not going to do anything else to settings in here. All I want to do is liquefy his body in a way that fills the screen behind him. So it's going to get a little funky looking, but that's okay. Oops, I zoomed in a little too far there. So if you need to zoom in a little, do so. You can just space bar and command and just click a couple times to zoom in or press option to that, those two. So space bar, command, and option will zoom out. Without option, we'll zoom in. Okay, so we want our brush to be a decent size here. And I'm going to start from the hat, but you can really start anywhere. And also making sure that the center of your brush is on part of the guy here. Because if you only do the tip of your brush, it's going to get a little difficult to pull outwards. So I'm going to start over from the beginning here. Okay, so I'm positioning my brush. So the center of my brush is on part of the guy here, and I'm going to start pulling it outwards. And again, I'm just paying attention to the fact that the middle of my brush is on some part of the body. So for example, right here, where the head is starting to get all crazy looking, the shoulder's still the same, but I have this angle here. If I'm not paying attention to where my brush is and I start pulling, you'll, you may end up getting a gap here, which is okay. You can fix it by coming back and pulling back out from the center again. So just know that you are trying to fill the entire screen and not leave any gaps. So I'm just going to go around this area the best I can towards his body. Once I get like a decent amount of it pulled out. You can make your brush a little bit bigger if you want to go a little bit faster, but still take your time. Um, I'm kind of paying attention to the way that I pull things out um, to kind of make them strands of color. So like his arm is stretching out and his shirt is stretching out, his head is stretching out. And I just kind of want to maintain these colors in strips the best I can. If you can't, it's again, not really that big of a deal. You might not really notice in the end. Um, oops. If you again see that you're getting these gaps in here, so I have this little strip of transparency between the arm and his sweater here, I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna try to keep liquefying to get rid of that strip. I don't want any blank spots. So you may just have to keep pulling it out you may have to start over. <laughs> I hope not. Oops, I keep zooming in way too far. So I'm gonna make my brush bigger. And I'm trying to pull out that strip there. I don't know if I'm ever gonna make it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Looks like it's finally closing up. So try to avoid that from the beginning. If you see a little strip forming like that, you might wanna undo and kind of start over again. A little tiny strip might be not, ugh, might not be a big deal, but if you get really big gaps, you'll notice them later on in the next steps. So take your time here. It might take a second to fill that screen. I have more left to do than I thought I did. You may not use this whole space, but it's good to have it there. It's good to have it to go all the way to the edges as well, um, just in case, because you don't really know how far you're going to go out. Okay, so this is as far as I'll go. Once you have it all good and full, we're going to hit OK. And so you're going to get this crazy looking image. We still have a um, layer that looks normal on top because we made that copy. OK, so now we are going to separate our layers using um, vector masks. On the bottom, we are going to add a black layer mask. So remember this acts as a window. If the layer mask is blacked out, then the window is closed and we cannot see what is on that layer. So for it to be a black layer mask, I'm going to press and hold option on my keyboard and click that vector mask icon. And so we'll get that black layer mask. 
and we no longer see all that crazy liquify that we did. On the top, I'm just gonna add a regular vector mask, so I'm not going to press and hold option, I'm just going to click on our vector mask icon, and nothing will happen, but we'll just get a layer mask. Okay, so now we need to find those brushes that we downloaded, and if you have not already, just know that um, they're in the downloads from the assignment. Once you find one, it should look something like this. It is an ABR file. All you have to do is double click on it and it should load automatically into Photoshop for you. So when you go into your brushes, of course we have our general brushes, but you should start to see some folders appending down here. Um, so if you loaded the, um, the 20 smoke brushes, those will appear right here. So let's go ahead and use the smoke brushes for this tutorial, but there are other brushes um, available, um, which I want you to explore with when you do this assignment or project on your own. But for the sake of just this tutorial in class, let's use the smoke brushes. Um, as the name states, there's 20 different brushes to choose from. Please utilize as many of them as you can or utilize multiple brushes. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is um, using the same brush over and over again and so they keep getting the same pattern and you're not getting enough diverse brushes to really accentuate the effect that you're trying to get. Okay, so the first part of this is to feather the edges of the body to kind of begin giving that look that he is fading away. So anytime you select these custom brushes, they're always huge for whatever reason. You can see up here at the top in your options bar that the point size of this brush is 2,500. And when you hover over your document, it's just so absolutely massive. It almost fills the entire thing. And I don't want to fill the whole page. So I'm going to use my bracket keys and make it a bit smaller. Uh, the other thing that I can look at with these brushes is that you can rotate them. There's this little circular icon when you drop down your brush panel. And if you click and rotate it, your brush will rotate. And this gives you a little more freedom as well to really get the look that you're trying to achieve. So what I'm gonna do is just take one brush at a time. And since we are on the white layer mask, also please make sure that you are selected on the layer mask. We are not painting on the guy here. So if you start painting black on here, that is wrong. We need to be painting on the layer mask. So notice in your layers panel, my brackets are around this icon. That is wrong. They need to be around the layer mask. So now if I click on here, I'm not going to be painting in black. I'm just going to be removing that part of the layer mask. So essentially creating that window and hiding certain parts. So as I click, you'll see part of him starts to disappear. And again, the reason why you need to explore different brushes is if I keep clicking and clicking and clicking and doing that over and over again, it's not looking natural. I keep seeing that same brush pattern repeating over and over and over again, and it's not realistic. Smoke does not flow the same way every time. So we need to keep that pattern a little more diverse. So I'm just gonna go down the line. It keeps it easy for me um, to stay organized and know which ones I have already used if I don't skip around too much. So I've used the first one, now I'm gonna move down to the second one. Same as before, I need to change that brush size, so I'm gonna make it a bit smaller, but not too small and maybe rotate the brush a little bit and pop it on there. I could always use different parts of the brush um, and use that same brush again. So I used it down here and I'm kind of only using the bottom half of the brush, but I did not use the top half. So maybe I just rotate it the other way and use that top half in a different location. So you just keep going down the line and slowly feathering out the edges of your guy here so that it looks like he's slowly dis 
dispersing away into smoke. Another thing you may want to pay attention to is that some brushes have a hard cutoff line. So when I'm looking at it, it doesn't look like it would be. It looks like nice, pretty tapered lines. But when I click and look closely, there's that hard stopping line. I don't want that. I want to avoid things like that. So I'm going to rotate my brush and use it at a different angle. I'm skipping around like I said I wasn't going to. Sorry. <laughs> and just keep adding them in there until you are satisfied. Paying attention to how it looks. So if you're not happy with it, then undo it and try it again. Sometimes I'll use them really big just as a slight little feather on the side. Okay, I can always come back and feather more if I decide I need to. Now I'm gonna move on to my crazy liquify layer and the black layer mask. So again, be sure to not click on the actual layer with the liquify. We're clicking on the layer mask because we're only editing the mask. And now that we're on the black mask, we need to be painting in white. And this is where we're going to decide where we want the smoke to extend from. So again, it's going to be a bit more important to have these tilted in a realistic way. So maybe like there. And then maybe I grab another one. See how it looks. Use them again at different sizes just to add a little bit of dimension here. Um, if you pop it in and it doesn't seem very um, opaque, you can always double click. Just make sure you don't move. Also, make sure you're not doing this. <laughs> That's not what we're trying to do here. Do not click and drag. You're only clicking once to just put that pattern onto the page. And just take your time and pay attention to how it's looking as you go about. So I'm just going to do a few more here. Also note that smoke usually flows upward, so you may not want to tilt the brushes too far on their side. Okay, so I'm going to call that good for the sake of me doing this in this tutorial. The next steps here, um, let's see, we're going to create a background. So we're going to click on the background layer. We're going to keep it hidden because it's just that image. We don't need it. And I'm going to click on this icon, that half filled circle. So create new fill or adjustment layer and choose gradient. I want a simple gradient. I want everyone to have the same simple gradient. So you can go into your basics and choose black to white. Change the black to a lighter gray. Keep white, white. And in this small dialog box, change your style from linear to radial. If the gray is on the inside, hit reverse so that white is on the inside and turn up your scale so that you just get this nice ominous glow. You don't want to see this harsh circle and all this gray on the outside. So just turn it up until you get this nice glow from the center. So I've got mine like 160, 150, somewhere around there. Okay, so I'm also going to have you guys use um, text and clipping mask in this tutorial. We've used them before, but I just want you to use them again. <laughs> 
So we're going to grab our text tool and just go ahead and type your name if you want to. Yikes. I'm just going to do my first name. Actually, you know what? Why not? I'm going to do my last name because I feel like it. Because we're going to be putting a clipping mask on this um, text, you're going to want to choose a nice thick font style. So I used lemon milk here. Um, you could choose any font you want, but please make sure it's bold. So you want to avoid little thin fonts like this because you're not going to see um, you're not going to see the pattern in the text very well. Okay, so I'm going to leave mine on lemon milk. You can download that from Defont. I'm going to make a new layer on top of that. And I'm going to, again, use my, um, my smoke brushes just however I see fit. And I'm going to create some smoke patterns on top of the letters here. Okay, until you're satisfied, we don't want it super messy like this, so we're going to create a clipping mask. Um, the long way to get there is to click on the menu button in your layers and choose create clipping mask. I'm on PC, so it says alt Control g which means on map, Mac, it will be command option g And then we see that it will wrap in that text. Uh, we're going to add some layer effects to the text so it looks a little bit more interesting. Okay, so we are going to select the text layer, not the smoke layer that we just created. And we're going to go into our FX icon. And the first thing we're going to do is add a stroke. So that's the second to the top there. We are going to make it a five point stroke on the outside in black and we're going to change the blending mode to darken. I'm also going to turn down the opacity so maybe like around 40, 50 percent, something like that. Okay, we're going to add a few more so don't hit okay just yet. We're going to do an inner shadow, again in black, changing the blending mode to multiply, turn your opacity down, probably like I'd say 30, 35%, something around there bit on the lower side. Um, let's see. <sighs> I lied. I was on the wrong thing. I think I said inner shadow and chose inner glow. I am so sorry. So <laughs> make sure you're choosing the right inner effect. Inner shadow. Again, in black, set to multiply. No wonder why I was getting so confused. 35 opacity. Um, the distance, 7. Choke, 0. Size, 33. Specific, I know. Um, then we're going to add a drop shadow. And again, that is going to be in black. Set the blending mode to normal if it's not already. Um, I'm going to leave my opacity to like 40%. Distance 11, spread 1, and size 7. So 
Very, very small. And hit OK. And we're also going to change the blending mode of the text layer completely. So now I'm going to go up to where it says normal in my layers panel and I'm going to change this to multiply. So it's going to kind of blend in with the background a little bit. Now would be also a good time to figure out whether this is going to look better on top or below the layers that are already existing. So we see that this red smoke is kind of coming in front of the um, letters here. So let's see what it looks like if we pull the text on top. We can still kind of see it. Um, another thing we can try is to just erase where it kind of overlaps um, and maybe make it look like it's wrapping around in a way. Um, so let's try that. I'm going to go to that black layer mask and I'm going to use white to erase and I'm just going to use a regular brush and maybe it goes behind the eye, I don't know. Just seeing what this looks like. Sure. So actually I think I'm gonna do that to all the letters here. So I'm going to just erase where the red smoke overlaps. This is not necessary, but I think it looks better, so I'm going to do it. And that's just simply what we do as designers. If it looks good, then do it. If it doesn't look good, then don't do it. Otherwise, I believe that is actually the end of our tutorial here. So the things that need to be accomplished is you must have this gradient layer and it should be plain like this, the gray to white radial layer. Um, your first liquefied and masked layer, so the black mask and the smoke or whatever effect you have coming from it. The top layer with just the guy and the white layer mask. Your text layer with these exact effects and these effects should also have the same um, settings as we did together. Your clipping mask with the smoke on top. And as long as you have all of that, we can go ahead and save and turn this in. So you are going to be naming this. Um, I'm going to have you guys call this DT underscore your name. So dispersion tutorial. Make sure you have that. PSD, so it's a Photoshop file. And go ahead and save that and turn it in and you are complete. But now you must do this on your own using your own images. And yes, you can still watch this video and use it as a tutorial if you need some reminders, but all of these steps should be completed. Um, somewhat the same, but still feel free to add your own creative flair to it and have fun.